Thankfully, it looks like there are some people in the country who have simply had enough of corrupt politicians, lying politicians, politicians who talk a good game but then end up not lifting a finger to fight for the right things. So there's a new Medicare for All march that I just learned about the other day. Let me go ahead and uh, show you some of this here. March for Medicare for All, and it's hashtag M4M4All. It's taking place on July 24th, 2021, and um, it's happening in a lot of places. So you have Albuquerque, New Mexico, Atlanta, Georgia, Austin, Texas, um, that city who, that I've never heard of in Minnesota, Boston, Massachusetts, Bridgeport, Connecticut, Chicago, Illinois, Columbus, Ohio, Corvallis, Oregon, Denver, Colorado, Detroit, Michigan, Fayetteville, Arkansas, Greensboro, North Carolina, Honolulu, Hawaii, Huntsville, Alabama, uh, Irvine, California, Kansas City, Missouri, Las Vegas, Nevada, Little Rock, Arkansas, Los Angeles, California, Louisville, Kentucky, Madison, Wisconsin, Manchester, New Hampshire, geez, uh, Medford, Oregon, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Nashville, Tennessee, uh, New York, New York, Newark, New Jersey, Olympia, Washington, Omaha, Nebraska, Orlando, Florida, Phoenix, Arizona, um, Pittsburgh, Portland, Port, uh, Portland, Oregon, Portland, Maine, Reno, Rochester, Salida, Colorado, Salt Lake City, Utah, San Diego, California, San Francisco, California, Seattle, Washington, Sylvia, North Carolina, Tampa, Florida, and, uh, Washington, D.C. in Washington. Or, excuse me, Washington, D.C., which is Washington, D.C. <laughs> Washington, D.C. is not in Washington State, excuse me. I'm a moron. So, anyway, um, if you scroll through the site, uh, you'll see... There's a, you know, a portion where you can put in your, you know, your personal story as to why you feel like we absolutely need Medicare for all. And it looks like a bunch of people have participated in that. Um, they're also, uh, you know, basically trying to push. I like this a lot. They're basically trying to push Biden to use the authority that he already has. It, it was actually originally under Obamacare, but they he what he can do is do an emergency executive order um, using it's a portion of uh, the Social Security Act, Bi Biden 1881A today. Oh, excuse me, that's not that's not the thing I'm, I was going to talk about. Oh, it, it is the thing I'm talking about. There it is, 1881A of the Social Security Act. Yeah. Um, so that is from, there's this article, I believe it was written from by David Dayen in The American Prospect, where he details how under Obamacare, there's a provision that basically gives like one city or town in the U.S. single payer health care, and they get it because of um, it's an emergency, and that town was ruined in some industrial accident, and a lot of people there get sick. And so the idea is, if there's an emergency and everybody desperately needs health care, then the president has the authority to enact it via executive order. So I think Dayan's argument was. You can start with doing that just for people's medical bills in regard to COVID. And then you can expand it to, well, while we're doing it for COVID, how is COVID any different from, you know, cancer treatment? If COVID treatment should be free, because they got it through no fault of their own, shouldn't cancer treatment be free? Shouldn't any illness treatment be free? Why shouldn't it all be free? And uh, it should. It should. So, but I like that they're what they're doing is they want to protest to try to pressure Biden to say, "We're done with the shit. Do Medicare for all right now, today." And as you guys know, I mention this all the time. There's an old saying: if you shoot for the stars, you might reach the moon. And if you put enough pressure, and if there's enough bodies in the street, I'm under no illusions. I don't think Biden will sign that. I don't think anybody at the protest thinks Biden is going to sign that. But you can move the Overton window. You could push the conversation. You could get some of the Congress people to sign on. Now we're up to like 118 co-sponsors for Medicare for All. But also, you might end up getting something. You might end up getting a new push for a public option. You might end up getting, um, you know, lowering the Medicare age to 55 or 60. By the way, we just got news last night that in this reconciliation package that Democrats agreed to in committee, it's $3.5 trillion, and it includes expansion of Medicare to include dental and vision and some other things. It's not expansion to 60 and up or 55 and up, but, you know, this is what we're talking about here. We're talking about a clear step in the right direction. Now, it's probably going to get 
slapped down by Mansion and Cinema or watered down even more, so hold your horses on celebrating that one. But bottom line is, we're outsiders. We don't need to play the insider game. In fact, we do better when we play on our terms and on our turf. And so what we should do is get out there and push the politicians, whoever's in power right now. We don't need to wait another election cycle or another election cycle or eight election cycles. Go fight right now and force it and move the Overton window. So, you know, I'm totally supportive of this march. Listen, got to be honest with you guys. I don't really know who started it and who's involved and how many people have committed, but I don't really care. And, and here's why. If you're fighting for the right thing, the time is always right to do what's right. And if you're fighting for the right thing, even if you come up woefully short, you can put your head down on your pillow at night and you could sleep like a baby knowing you were fighting for the right thing. And you were on the front lines of what is effectively like a new civil rights movement. You know, there will be future generations. I don't know how long in the future it's going to be, but they'll look back and say, could you believe there was a time where we everybody didn't have health care? That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. You want to lead that fight. You absolutely want to lead that fight. So this, uh, this march actually came under fire recently uh, because there was a scandal. They were either pranked or like infiltrated by some far right people. And what happened is a notorious white nationalist, a guy by the name of Matthew Heimbach, was put on as a speaker at one of the marches for Medicare for All. Uh, and he was put on some promotional material. Now, the reason I know it was either a prank or they, will, they were infiltrated is because the name on the thing was changed. It wasn't Matthew Heimbach. It was Matthew H. Bach. And so, listen, I recognized him because I'm a massive political junkie, but not everybody's a massive political junkie. Some of these people just want health care. So they didn't realize it. It slipped through the cracks. And then what happened is, as soon as they learned about it and there was pushback, they were mortified. They immediately removed him. They immediately denounced him and white nationalism and white supremacy and everything. Um, they apologized, and then they kept moving forward. And listen, that's all you can do. And I'm incredibly sympathetic when there are roadblocks and speed bumps, even big ones, because I know how hard it is to try to build something official and build something real, being involved in Justice Democrats. And I know that it, when it, you look at a bureaucracy and you look at so many people involved and there's so many moving parts, it's nearly impossible to manage. So do I look at that mistake and now all of a sudden, what? I'm not in favor of Medicare for all and I'm not in favor of protesting for Medicare for all? Of course not. Of course I'm in favor. Like, that shouldn't prevent you from wanting to get up and fight for the things that are right and the things that are just and the things that are moral and ethical and correct. So I don't care about their mistake. It was a, it was a mistake and we're past it. And now they want to get out there and march for Medicare for all. So anyway, the reason I'm doing this segment is to tell everybody, July 24th, you see all the cities it's happening in. Um, you know, I'll leave the link to the thing in the video description box if you want to get in touch with some of the people involved and you want to show up to the Medicare for All March. Again, it, you know, these things take time and the way you eventually win is by relentlessly fighting. And a beautiful flower started off as a little seed or a bulb. And right now we might be in the bulb phase or the seed phase or whatever. We might be a tiny caterpillar that will eventually become a butterfly, but you got to start somewhere. And I respect the fact that these people are starting with something. And there's nothing I agree with more than direct issue advocacy. And that's what this is. The funny thing is, the reason why I like it so much is because it's so hard to tarnish direct issue advocacy as anything other than what it is. But of course, people had done that because they looked at the mistake with the white nationalists and they were like, ah, now we're against this. You look at a mistake and now people shouldn't have health care? That doesn't make any sense. So anyway, um, get out there if you want to march on this, if you want to fight on this. Um, no matter what, you're helping and it's going to feel great. And maybe this starts as one thing and then maybe you end up doing it every month and then maybe you know, it, eventually it hits a tipping point, but you got to keep moving. You got to stay in motion and you got to fight for what's right. And I don't need to do this next part of the rant, but I'm going to do it because it's directly pertinent. Why should you do this? In the United States, up to 60,000 people die every year from lack of health care. If you're not fighting that, you're sort of co-signing that. 
you know, you're resigned to that fate. Sometimes the number is as low as 27,000. Sometimes it's as high as 60,000. That is unacceptable. Unacceptable. In this country, medical bills is one of the top causes of bankruptcy. That's unacceptable. A medical bankruptcy is not a thing in any other developed country. We're also the only developed country that just doesn't have universal health care. In our system, there's price gouging at every le level. The health care providers are price gouging you, the health insurance companies are price gouging you, and Big Pharma is price gouging you. That's why I say there's a scam on top of a scam within a scam. And our politicians aren't doing anything to fight back against that. Unacceptable. It's because these big corporate interests effectively own the government and run the government. That's all got to stop. We got to stop all that stuff. Medicare for all would save $5.1 trillion over a decade. That's not me speaking. That is a, a detailed study from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. $5.1 trillion over a decade. So not only is it the moral and ethical thing to do, it's also the fiscally responsible thing to do. You're going to have no more premiums, no more copays, no more deductibles under Medicare for All system. And by the way, nobody's going to tell you where you can and can't go to see a doctor. Right now, if you have health insurance, sometimes you want to go to a doctor and they say, you can't go. That doctor's not in network. So they micromanage you. In a Medicare for All system, they don't do that. And listen, I'm, you guys know me. I like to fancy myself a data guy, a, a stats guy, a facts guy, and I try to make up my mind based on the empirical evidence. But also, as you know, you've heard this story before if you're a longtime listener of this show, but this is also personal to me because uh, the way that my dad passed away was uh, shocking. Shocking in some ways, not so shocking in other ways. I'll explain it. Uh, so he was a smoker virtually his entire life. And um, he had this severe back pain towards the end of his life. And what he would do is... He would go to the chiropractor. The reason he would go to the chiropractor is because it was inexpensive, and the guy convinced him, I'm going to make you better. Back might hurt. We'll fix that. So he would go to the chiropractor. He'd go to the chiropractor. He'd go to the chiropractor. And um, my dad was also sort of naive and a little dumb, and he thought that, like, the chiropractor is a real doctor. Like, a chiropractor is like a back doctor. Um, he didn't understand that it's really, like, a glorified backcracker and more of a masseuse than a doctor, if you will. Um, some... Some chiropractors believe in subluxation theory, which is this idea that you'll never have illness or disease if we just keep your spine straight. Those doctors are, uh, those chiropractors are not doctors. They're total cranks and it's pseudoscience. There's others who know what they are. They're like glorified backcrackers and those who are honest about it, fine. They're fine, whatever. But he would keep going to this chiropractor. His back pain got worse and worse and worse. Eventually, he went to the emergency room. One of the reasons he held off going to the emergency room, other than the fact that you know, the chiropractor was basically telling him, hey, come here, we'll take care of it, you'll be fine. But one of the other reasons he held off is because he didn't have insurance. And he knew it would be expensive if he went to, a, like, a doctor doctor, like the emergency room, you know, or to a hospital or whatever. Couldn't take the pain, went to the emergency room. They found out that that pain he was dealing with in his back was a tumor. He had lung cancer, and it metastasized to his spine. And it was stage four. So they immediately did um, surgery within the first two or three days, because it was that devastating that they needed to do it immediately. It, it was unsuccessful. They weren't able to get off as much of the tumor as they wanted. Um, and he was basically, he basically was a death sentence. He didn't have long to live. I was so naive at the time, I didn't really understand what was going on. I didn't understand that he really had very, very limited time. Um, but soon thereafter, like a couple weeks, he was dead. He was dead. And again, so I blame a couple things. The pseudoscience charlatan chiropractor who was taking advantage of my father and at no point said, you should go to a real doctor. Hey, come back. We'll take care of it. I'll crack your back in this way or that way and it'll be fixed. You won't have any back pain. So I blame that guy and I blame pseudoscience, junk science, charlatans, alternative medicine, which if it was real medicine, it'd just be called medicine. But then I also blame the fact that he didn't have insurance, and he was afraid of what a bill would look like if he went to the hospital. So he put it off as long as he could. Now, listen, again, I don't know for sure. I can't read my dad's mind. I don't know for sure if the chiropractor's thing was enough to keep him just going back there. Um, maybe it was. And so maybe my rant comes to naught and Medicare for All wouldn't have saved my dad's life. But there's a non-zero chance that it would have if he could have just gone to the doctor and not paid anything out of pocket. 
the whole the whole thing is criminal in my opinion our whole system is criminal and it's unacceptable and so i'm in favor of any and all ways of fighting back and i respect everybody who's deciding to take action and get out there and try to fight i don't care how many people show up you know i don't care if it's 3 people in each city i have nothing but respect for all 3 people who show up in each city so i wish these guys the best uh if any of you on July 24th want to go ahead and march with them, highly recommend it. Um, and I hope this eventually gets big enough. I don't know if this event on its own will be big enough for the actual media to cover it, but maybe if we keep doing it, maybe eventually they'll cover it. And maybe politicians will start to get, you know, a wake-up call. I know it's naive, I know it's a long shot, but the alternative is sitting on our ass and doing nothing, and I'm not in favor of that.